<laughs> Hello everyone and peace of the Lord to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Uh, we did not uh, do introduction because uh, our topic is uh, no need for music. It's haram. Music is haram. I hope my microphone is coming good to you, not like yesterday. Uh, you know, if you if you ask Muslims about their God, they will give you all kind of things like, "Who is Allah? He is the Creator." Okay. I mean, who is Allah? I'm not asking you what He do. You know, he, the Creator. And yet, in the Quran, it says it clearly that Jesus can create. And if the Muslim they say, "Well, by the permission of Allah," that will not change anything, because still He is the Creator too. At least for the things He created. So, and then the Quran says Allah is the best of the creators. So always the Muslims, they dodge the question, who is Allah? Because obviously they know nothing about their God. Actually, before I start, I just saw this video. And I think the Lord is helping us with our topic. Uh, is the sound too, too strong? Is my microphone too high? Let me lower it. Let me know, guys, if the sound have any problem. Uh, women, uh, uh, like Muslims, are discussing about Allah. And the question is, actually, I will let you hear the question from him. And I hope that his voice is coming clear, because yesterday, we have a problem with my voice and the voice of the one we play. Let us see what this guy is saying. Says, a friend of mine claims that we should not say that Allah is on the throne because it will mean that Allah holds physical space. But if Allah does not have physical existence, then it means he is just in imagination. But... Uh, so here, focus with the question, please. A Muslim saying to other Muslim, we should not say that Allah is on the throne. Because if this is the case, then Allah is inside the space. The Muslims now are thinking. And the second you start thinking, Islam will have a problem. And now the Sheikh will help the Muslims how to get the answer. What is the solution for this question? I will play the question again, in case you miss it. Listen carefully. A friend of mine claims that we should not say that Allah is on the throne because it will mean that Allah holds physical space. But if Allah does not have physical existence, then it means he is just in imagination, but, uh, that he is just an, an imagination and how can someone see an imagination whereas Allah has promised to show himself to the people of Jannah? Zainab, these issues are very sensitive. As Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, as believers of the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the three favored generations, we do not use our logic when it comes to Allah Azza wa Jal. So when it comes to Allah's beautiful names and attributes, we do not say that this is logical, this is not logical. How can we say this? How can this happen? This is unacceptable. We did not see Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah cannot be imagined. So how dare someone ask a question or deny something from the Quran and the Sunnah. This is exactly your friend, what he's doing. This is exactly what the Jahmiya did when they made all the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal without any value. So Allah Azza wa Jal is all hearing, but he doesn't hear. How is that? Allah Azza, they made Allah exactly as they define vacuum so when they wanted to describe allah 
They said Allah is not up, Allah is not down, Allah is not in front, Allah is not back, Allah is not on the right, Allah is not in the left, Allah does. If you want to describe something that does not exist, it would fit as a glove. And this is wrong. Now, as Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we only believe in the names and attributes that Allah had told us about them in the Quran or that the Prophet himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about in the Sunnah. That's it. No one can come for out of the blue and say that, Wallah, Allah's beautiful name is so and so. Where did you get this name from? Quran Sunnah said no. So then this is unacceptable. Likewise, when you come to talk about Allah Azza wa Jal does not hold a physical space. The issue of holding a physical space was not told to us, neither in the Quran or the Sunnah. So when you say such a statement, we have to know exactly what do you mean. If you mean that Allah Azza wa Jal does not exist, like the Jahmiya has explained, and that he is nowhere, nothing, and, and, and the likes, all negative attributes. In this case, no, this is wrong. We know that Allah Azza wa Jal exists. We know that Allah Azza wa Jal is above his throne and his throne is the ceiling of the... Uh... Guys, look at this. In the beginning, he said, <clears throat> we should not say uh, Allah, uh, you know, uh, we cannot define Allah. Like, you know, we cannot say this, we cannot say that. Don't be like those Muslim Jahmiya, which they became kuffar. The Jahmiya is a group of people, they start thinking, how does God is mentioned by Muhammad, uh, how is he? So either we say he is God and nothing like him. And so when he hears, doesn't mean he have ears. When he see, doesn't mean he have eyes. When he talk, doesn't mean he have mouth. When he say hand, doesn't mean he have hands. So they try to create a God that does not exist, as he said, because Allah is not a spirit. So what is left? Remember, the God of Islam is not a spirit and he has no spirit. So he's saying such a question is very, very unacceptable, will lead you out of Islam. But then he says something very stupid. He says, we cannot say that Allah is not above the throne. Remember, the question from the beginning is, if Allah is above the throne, that means he is taking a space. As simple as that. Is a throne in the Quran, is physical throne? Yes, it is. Is it carried by eight mountain goats? Yes. Is it even the angels or the goat could not carry the, the throne because it's so heavy and Allah helped them? Yes. Is the throne physical? Yes. So Allah now is above the throne, but isn't it above is a location? And can we have a location without having a space? Above the throne is a fixed location. Even if the throne is moving, still the location above the throne, which means whatever object in the top of the throne will be moving with the throne. So it does say the throne goes like the same as the sun or anything moving in the space. Even that will make it a fixed location. So he's supposedly helping the Muslims and we should not ask those questions. Why we need to understand Allah by logic? So what they know about Allah exactly? Nothing. What he have an answer to explain Allah? Nothing. And you will see the other group at Jahmiya. He called them Jahmiya. Those are people who believe in philosophy. So they start involving philosophy to find a solution for things said by in the Quran, which is not acceptable. I agree, because the Quran make it clear. Muhammad make it clear that Allah have hands. Allah have a look. Like, and you know, he refused to accept that Allah is inside the space. But how Allah have a shin and have a hand and have a, 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 a face and he have a body, yet he is not inside the space. The second you say you have a body, that body is inside the space. Even if it's an empty space, still it's a space. Like when we say that in the, in the you know, in, in the space, like when the uh, space, spaceship goes, that is a space. Even there is no air, there is nothing. But it is a space. 
And when the hadith goes, says, Allah come down every third part of the night, if you remember, would that mean Allah he go down? Jahmiyyah, if you heard him saying, they say Allah don't go up, Allah don't go down. Muslim, they say yes, Allah go up, Allah go down. So they refuse to say Allah is inside the space, but everything they believe in, Allah is inside the space. And that will destroy the whole idea debating the Christians. They say, well, God cannot be inside his creation. Do you remember the stupid Lili Dawa? The stupid Lili Dawa, he made a video that says, how to refute Christianity in, what, three minutes? And in his video, you can watch it. We made a video about it. He says, God cannot be inside his creation. This is supposed to refute the Christians about Jesus being God. So if the flesh of Jesus is a creation as a flesh, well, how God can be inside his creation? This is the objection. And then we find that Allah himself is inside his creation. Actually, he admit at the end, this idiot, he forgot what he said a, a year after. If you later you want to download this video, you can insert the video of Lili Dawa, peace be upon her, where he said, Allah cannot be, in, God cannot be inside his creation. And the video where he says, God, Allah, he is, he go inside his creation. How? I don't know. <laughs> That's what he said. So the Muhammad and they are very confused about a very confused God who does not exist, obviously. They have no idea. They have no information about this God. All the attribute they speak about their God have no value. No value. Like Allah is a beautiful. One of the names of Allah is a beautiful. Did you see Allah? Is he a physical person? What is the beautiful? What do you mean? Beautiful in the eye of who? If you believe that God created Adam in the image of a man, uh, created a man in the image of God, and then you say, well, God is a, our God is a good looking God. But okay, I'm talking about the image of the man. But if you don't believe that Allah is having the image of a man, then what beauty are talking about? He's a beautiful cockroach, he's a beautiful ant. Because I believe that beauty, beauty depends who, who is looking. I don't know if we see two cats, one male and one female. I'm sure the male cat you will see in a certain cat is more beautiful than the other cat. Maybe for us we don't notice that, for we are not from their kind. But we have the same man. He will be like a woman more than other women, even though all of us will look the same at the end of the day. As like we have feet, we have legs, we have uh, uh, hands, we have face. But for the same kind, you can recognize a difference difference between this and that, this person and that person, this animal and that animal. So if Allah is a beautiful, they are talking about what beauty in the eyes of who? The Muslim, they will see Allah. If you remember in the beginning of this uh, video, he says, uh, well, how we can see Allah if he does not exist? Let me play again so I can refresh your memory. That Allah holds physical space. But if Allah does not have physical existence, then it means he is just in imagination, but, uh, that he is just an, an imagination. And how can someone see an imagination whereas Allah has promised to show himself to the people of Jannah. Zainab, these issues are very sensitive. As Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, as believers of the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the three favored generations, we do not use our logic when it comes to Allah Azza wa Jal. So when it comes to Allah's beautiful names and attributes, we do not say that this is logical, this is not logical. How can we say this? How can this happen? This is unacceptable. We did not see Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah cannot be imagined. So how dare someone ask a question or deny something from the Quran and the Sunnah? This is exactly so listen, we did not see Allah. So how can someone ask such a question? 
well, as long you did not see Allah, and even the question is forbidden about Allah, so what do you know about Allah? Nothing. What What is the God exactly you believe in? Who is He? I mean, they cannot even discuss, okay, Allah have a throne. Allah is above the throne. What above mean? Is the throne physical? The answer yes. Is Allah physical? The same guy, he said in different video, yes, Allah have hands. Let me search for the video. Give me a second. He said and he agreed, yes, Allah have hands. Allah have a foot. Allah have a, you know, uh, Let me find another video. Give me a second. Oh. Look, I mean, I just clicked to find his video. Another video open for me. Priceless. Let us use it. I did not even look. I did not even type in the search engine. The Lord is helping. Look at this. How does Allah descend to the lowest heaven? What is the topic? How does Allah descend to the lowest heaven when it is the third part of the night? So he was telling her that we cannot say Allah have a space. We cannot say those things. We cannot say Allah is inside the space. But now he is saying Allah descend. I mean, do you see the stupidity? How it is not acceptable to say that Allah is inside a space, and He occupy a space, and now Allah, He descend every day where? To the lowest heaven, which means He passed through seven heavens in order to, low, to go to the lowest heaven. According to Muhammad, there are seven heavens. The distance between of them, each one of them, is 500 years travel by the camel for sure. Which is nothing. So Allah is going from the seven heaven, He's above the seven heaven, sixth heaven, fifth heaven, fourth heaven, and then He arrived to the first heaven and He started asking people who is listening to me. But I thought we cannot ask if Allah is inside the space. The same guy, the same sheikh. Says. By mistake, we. We. Uh, we skip the video. Give me a second. We click at the wrong button. Let us see. Yeah, this one. I need to replace my mice, my mouse. It's not functioning right. Moiz says regarding a hadith in which is said of Allah descending to the lowest heaven when one third of the night remains. I'm a little confused about it. The time when one third of the night remains varies from one place to the other. Does Allah descend to the lowest heaven multiple times? Because time varies in different parts of the world. Mu'izz. Your question is quite disturbing. The reason is that you are comparing Allah Azza wa Jal to us humans. The hadith is authentic without any doubt. Allah Azza wa Jal descends to the lower heaven when the last third of the night is due. And Allah says, is there anyone seeking forgiveness so I would forgive him? Is there anyone asking me so that I would give him? Is there anyone supplicating to me so that I would answer him? This is authentic. There's no doubt in that. But the problem is that you're comparing Allah's descent to ours. And this is unacceptable because Allah says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ there is nothing. Do you see the stupidity? Aren't you the one who said Allah descend? 
Well, this is what the send mean. The send, it means he come down. And if he come down, he have to go up again. Because he come down, he descend every third part of the night. Which means not only he descend physically, even he have his is inside the time. Like for us, we are we cannot we cannot escape the time. Even if you can say time is an illusion. But because you know, I mean time it's not something physical, it's not something we can hold, it's not something we can catch, it's not something we can stop. Time simply, the, the existence of time is based on us uh, changing. And here, the time is oh, how Allah, he changed. What the change happened? He was a change in location. We do not know if he changed physically too. Because if Allah is bigger than the whole world, and then he go inside the world, obviously Allah is a changing. Because remember, the Muslims, they say Allahu Akbar. Akbar in Arabic means bigger. Even though the translate says Allah is great, which is false. In Arabic, the word great is Azim, and that is one of the attribute of Allah. So you cannot call him twice with the same word. Akbar does not mean Azim. Azim means great. Akbar means bigger. This is why we see the story of uh, uh, Abraham in the Quran. When he saw the sun coming up in the sky, he says, Hada Rabbi, Hada Akbar. What he called the son? Akbar. This is my Lord. This is Akbar. As you see, this is the Quran. Chapter 6, verse number 70, 78. This stupid mouse is not functioning. I don't know what's wrong with it. So when he saw the sun rising, he said, this is my Lord. This is bigger. Do you see it? Yes. This is the Muslim translation. This is not my, my translation. This is what? This is bigger. What the word in Arabic? Look with me. Look, 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 look. This is what the Muslim write in Arabic for you. Allahu Akbar. Akbar. You see it, Akbar? Let me zoom for you. Do you see it? That is the true meaning of Akbar. There's two God. One is La, the moon God, and one is the sun God, that is Akbar. What Islam do? Islam unite the two gods who they are in control of everything around us. The sun and the moon. The Arab, because they like the moon, they don't like the sun, so they worship the moon specifically. Those who live in a cold territory, they worship the sun specifically because they want the sun. They are desperate. The Arab, they hate the sun because the sun burn their grass, destroy their animals, make them go thirsty. If the rain comes, the rain disappears right away with the heat. So the, the moon is the, like the nice, the easy, the loving you know, you spend the night, like, give you light, especially for those who live in the desert, there's no electricity at that time. The sun is the opposite. The sun is the one we want to hide from it. But if you live in north of Europe, then the sun is the opposite. The sun is the one you are waiting for, desperate to have. You know, the, the sun come, everybody is out because simply, oh, wow, that sun is coming because they don't see the sun a lot. So each territory worship a God fit with their weather so we can say that in the old days people worship weather gods the one who make you warm in a cold area is your god the one who made you burn in a hot area he is your enemy this is why muhammad he said that the sun come from between the two horn of uh, uh, of shaitan Muhammad was not making things up. Muhammad, he was saying what the Arabs say, and he believed in it. The Muslims are not allowed to pray during the time when the sun already rising. Because why? As you see. I don't know if the... If the uh, 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 is the text clear? 
I hope so. So it says here the Messenger of Allah saying, None of you must choose for himself and pray at the rising or the setting of the sun. Why? In different version he said, When the rim of the sun rise, leave off a prayer till it come night right up. And when the rim of the sun goes below the horizon, leave off a prayer till has set. And do not make rising or setting of the sun your time of a prayer. Now we will give you the reason. For it rises between the horns of the devil. Do you see it? Are you with me? And here you see that Muhammad is nothing but a fiction person, superstition. He believed, this is why the Quran, you know, if you remember in chapter 9, uh, it says uh, 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 he is ears. Muhammad is an ear. They call him ear. Why they call him ear? Because he, or anything he hear, he added to his religion. He heard the Jews say Moses, he add Moses. He heard them saying Miriam, he said, okay, Miriam is sister of Jesus. He heard Jesus, he made him Asa's. We do not know even where Asa came from. So he's an ear, and now he heard from previous generation that the sun rides from between the two horn of Shaitan. But if you ask yourself why they are saying that, because those are people who live in the desert, they hate the sun. The sun is their enemy. This is the evil is coming. The sun is coming. And now Muhammad is making his religion very much under the feet of the devil. Why? Because don't pray to Allah in this time. And if you ask yourself, what will happen exactly if the Muslim pray at that time exactly? Is that the point where Allah cannot show himself? Is that the point Allah he have to run? Or he is in the run? Because now the the devil, his horn is coming up. In fact, he should do the opposite. If the horn of the devil is coming now and this time, you, this is the time you pray. Are you with me? If this is the time where he claimed that the devil come, then this is the time, like when you, you pray when the devil leave, isn't you Muslim you say we seek refuge by Allah from the evil ones? Well, the evil one is coming, so why are you cannot pray? Actually, I challenge any Muslim or any Muhammadan. Those are even the word Muslim is not exist. The word Muslim Muhammad he's he stole it from an Arab guy, and we can make a topic about it. Everything in this religion of this guy is a theft, even the name Al Rahman, Allah, Al Rahim, all all names, Muhammad, Ahmad. Everything he have is a theft. But now, if there is a single Muslim, he dare to tell us what exactly happening if you pray while the sun is coming up. What is the problem? Is Allah will struggle? Is your prayer is going to be waste or killed? Can maybe Shaitan harm you when you are praying? Leave your comment for us Muslims. But look now what happened. Akbar is Allah. Allah, Mr. Akbar, he go down inside the his the heaven between heaven number seven and heaven number one. Akbar, who is bigger than everything, you know, like if you go in the Quran, it says the chair of Allah alone. It's is is the same exact size as the sky and the earth. Because by the way, Muhammad, he think. That the sky is exactly the same size of the earth. The earth is a flat, and there is a sky in the top of it as a roof. And the word roof appears many times in the Quran. You know, in case you do not know. I'm trying not to make the topic complicated, but as you see. Chapter 52, verse number 5. Allah himself, he swear by the left up roof. Which roof he's talking about? The sky. 
So the throne of Allah is in the size of the earth and the heaven because the heaven have the same size of the earth. The earth is flat. There is a sky in the top of it. Allah, he make that sky a roof for the earth. And if you, if you ask yourself, the verse they are saying, protected roof. Protected from what? No genie or a human can get out to the top of the roof because in the top of the roof there is Allah. In the top of the roof there is Allah. So if somebody try to get out to the top of the roof, Allah will do what? Allah will send star and burn. That uh, 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 that person or genie who is trying to get out. Let us see. As you see here, as an example, there's more verses in chapter thirty seven, verse number ten. Muhammad claimed that shaitan he tried to steal information from Allah. So what he do? He make a hole in the roof and he go up above the roof and then when he go up he steal some information but when he go back most likely not all of them some of them they are able to get down. Allah will shoot him by a star. You will see actually here, in chapter 37, it says here, we decorated or adorned the lower heaven with the beauty of the planets, which is supposedly the stars, according to the Muslims, and guarded it from, guarded against every shaitan. So now shaitan cannot go out. He cannot go to the sky. And if you try to go, Allah will shoot a star at him. Now, for sure, all of this is scientists. And uh, what they say to you that Elon Musk and the American and the Russian and the Chinese and the Indian, even the Arab, they went to the, to the space. It's a lie. Approve the Quran. All of those are liars. And here you see how stupid the Quran. And this is mentioned, by the way, in many verses in the Quran, not only here, you know, uh, but going back to our topic so as you see Allah have has, a, has a physical body Allah go up and down in the previous video he was saying we cannot talk about Allah having physical is inside physical space and now he's saying Allah go down every night we can't say Allah is inside physical space we cannot haram and how he answered the question, this question is not acceptable. The problem is, we think about Allah coming down as if we go down. But who cares who, how he come down? He come down. When you say, if, if your God don't want to say, don't want us to understand wrong, why he is saying descend? Do he descend or not? He said, yes, Allah descend. So how come this question is wrong? Let's listen again and love. One place to the other. Does Allah descend to the lowest heaven multiple times? Because time varies in different parts of the world. And this is another issue. Here, it proved to us that Muhammad is a fraud. And he thinks that we have one time in the whole earth. So Allah come down every third part of the night. And if the Muslim they say no, this is not what it meant. That means Allah He come down and up and down like a yo-yo. Because how many times do we have? How many third part of the night we have? Every hundred, two hundred, three hundred kilometers we have a new time zone. 
even without time zone, because if you move, if you move just a, a few miles away, the, the time changing, but maybe little, but it's changing. So Allah come down every third part of the night, and they're asking the question, well, if Allah come down every third part of the night, how that work? We have many time zone. What is the answer? The question is not legitimate. Stupid question. Does Allah descend to the lowest heaven multiple times? Because time varies in different parts of the world. Mu'iz, your question is quite disturbing. Your question is a quite disturbing, brother. Brother? Your question is disturbing. Good you are not there, he will kill you. The question is disturbing. Why? Because you decide to use your brain. I mean, how Allah come down every third part of the night? Do we have one third part of the night? What is the answer? Your question is disturbing. That's it. He silenced the guy, he solved the problem. What do you want more? Your question is quite disturbing. The reason is that you are comparing Allah Azza wa Jal to us humans. The hadith is authentic without any doubt. Allah Azza wa Jal descends to the lower heaven when the last third of the night is due. Allah says, is there anyone seeking forgiveness so I would forgive him? Is there anyone asking me so that I would give him? Is there anyone supplicating to me so that I would answer him? This is authentic. There's no doubt in that. But the problem is that you're comparing Allah's descent to ours. Mm. And this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. So why Allah, he used the word descent if his descent is not a descent like us? You see, this is the same potato. He says, Allah have hands. And he said, well, Allah, he said, he have hands. Let me have hands. And now they will say to you, but we cannot compare the hands of Allah. Like, you know, I mean, Allah, not like, nothing like Allah. Like, what, what does it have to do with anything? Nothing like Allah. But, uh, but you know what? Every human being, nothing like him. According to science, not a single human being is the same as other human. They have different DNA. They have different, even, even twins, they have different fingerprint. Look, they are twins. They are really twins, yet they have two different fingerprint. They have different fingerprints in their skin. They have different fingerprints in their eyes. They have different size of the brain. They, they, even they are twin. According to science, every flake of snow have nothing like it. It's, just, it's not the same. Like any other flake of snow. Even if you bring billions of flakes of snows, still each one of them is different. So they keep holding this saying, Allah, nothing like him. But they know nothing about Allah. They knew nothing about Allah. And the second you ask a question, the Muslims, they will say to you, this is disturbing. So now, the one who heard this, they will, oh man, what I did. Oh boy, Allah will be angry from me. This is disturbing. Man, did you see his eyes? This is disturbing question. Like, don't use your brain, you stupid idiot. You are, comp the problem, you are comparing the way we descend, the way Allah descend. Who cares how Allah descend? We want to know. Is it true? He said yes. Allah descend. Would that mean he go inside his space? The space he created supposedly. So in the previous video, he refused to answer about Allah is inside the space. Now you are agreeing without saying the word. Continue. Allah says, Laysa kamithlihi shay. There is nothing like him. And he is the most, the more and he is the most hearing and seeing. He is the all hearing and... Look, they say hearing, but the second he said to him, how Allah he hear? He said, this question is not acceptable, disturbing. 
Allah is all seeing. How he is seeing? Allah, this, this, that. But they know nothing about him. And we can prove from the Quran that Allah cannot hear. Actually, this, this hadith he is quoting about Allah, proving Allah is not all hearing because why he come down every night so he can ask people who is praying for me. Why he come down? For a very simple reason. He asked people who is praying for me. So if Allah is all hearing, why he need to come down to listen who is praying to me if he can hear him from there? Do you understand what I'm saying? He just said Allah is all hearing. But the title of the video is about what? This is about hadith. Allah come down every third part of the night and he say, who is praying for me? So I can answer him. So if Allah is all hearing, he do not need to go down. I mean, this is troubling. And how Allah is, a, is capable of anything. And now in order to hear you, he have to get closer. Allah have to come down for a very simple reason. So he can hear you. Can Allah hear you from the seven heaven? The hadith which he called a very authentic prove the opposite. Allah cannot hear you. Seeing. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, if you look at Allah's attributes, you would acknowledge that Allah is all hearing all-seeing, powerful, knowledgeable, <laughs> merciful, the provider, he's the giver of death and life. Now, when we look at one of his attributes, or any of his attributes, does anyone on earth believe that Allah's attributes are like ours? Allah stated in the Quran, nothing is unlike to him. This is a statement in the Old Testament, nothing like God. But when the Old Testament, they mention that, they are not talking about a look and a stupid things like you Muslims. Nothing like God is about, eth you know, ethnic, sorry, eth ethic, about dignity, about pure, about no sin. Otherwise, who would there are nothing like God? Your God have a hand, your God have a foot, your God have five fingers, your God have eyes, your God, a so nothing like God can't be about those things. Nothing like God because God is not a sinner. Nothing like God because God is all powerful. I am not. But your God cannot have a son, as the Quran says, without having a girlfriend. Can Allah have a son without a girlfriend? The Quran say no. And who is the one who say that? Is that like the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhists? No. Allah himself, he says, how can he, speaking of himself, he call himself he, have a son if you don't have a girlfriend? And yet they said to you, Allah is all-powerful. But the guy cannot have a son without having a female. The God of Mary, he can have a son without having a wife, without sex. Mary, her God, can make her have a son without having a spouse. So Allah in the Quran, chapter six, the, cha in the imagine guys, this is in the chapter of the animals. Which chapter? This is why the Quran chapters names they don't make sense. The topic is messed up. This is the chapter of An'am. An'am means animals. And what is the chapter of An'am speaking of? About Allah don't have a wife, and therefore He cannot have a son. And look, it says, "How can He? Who is the one using the word how can?" But we just heard this guy, we can't question Allah. The same we question ourselves. We can't understand Allah by using our logic. You cannot understand how Allah come down because you think about how we come down, how we descend. You cannot question how Allah hear because you think we are here in the same way. But Allah himself is saying, he's the same as us, he says, how can he have a son when he don't have a girlfriend. And there's no companion. It says actually, girlfriend, sahiba. So Allah himself, he questioned his ability. 
Why did Shaykh don't say to Allah, shame on you? Are you stupid or what? This is a disturbing statement. You, Allah, asking Allah, how can Allah have a son without having a girlfriend? Are you with me? This Shaykh, he should shame Allah himself. Because if we cannot ask Allah how he can hear, how he can descend, how he can be above the throne, is he inside the space or not? If those questions are forbidden, well, this is a question made by Allah. How can he have a son without having a girlfriend? A Muslim will say to you, well, Allah is saying to you, he don't have a girlfriend. No, 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 listen. He is not saying he don't have a girlfriend. He is saying, how can he have a son if he don't have a girlfriend? Which means, he is questioning his ability. If you say to me, this is not what he meant, that means he used the wrong Arabic. That means your God is a Bangladesh guy working in, in, in Saudi Arabia and speaking the language of Sadiq. How are you doing, Sadiq? You will see a Muslim coming from Pakistan, coming to the uh, uh, Middle East, you know. And that's it. Anyone he see him in the way, he said, Sadiq, how are you doing, Sadiq? Supposed to know he speaks Arabic. Sadiq, which means friend. It's like me going to uh, to Italy, and I anyone I see in the street, I call him Tony. Because, yeah, 90% of the men in, in Italy, their name is Tony. Hey, Tony, eh? well, how, how can I help you? Yeah, it happened, you know, because everybody there is Tony. So, Allah is the same as Mr. Sadiq. Either he is making poo here, and the sentence is awkward, stupid, or Allah, he mean it. So, if you say he don't mean it, that means he's stupid. If he used the wrong word comparing himself to us, but he don't mean, want to compare himself, that means stupid. So why he's saying how I can have a son if I don't have a girlfriend? Unless he mean it. So what we, what this comes from? Allah cannot have a son unless he have a girlfriend. And how then you say Allah is all powerful, almighty? Because the almighty, he do not need a wife. He can have a son as he wish. Isn't it the Muslim they say the Quran says the similarity between Jesus and Adam, Allah He said to them, Be and He was. And then we find that neither Jesus, neither Adam in the Quran created by saying be. Allah He breathed into the private part of Mary in the story of Jesus, and Allah He created the mud by mixing mud and water, dirt and water, and then He made the fashion statues and leave it for 40 years to dry it. Look like when Allah he did that, it was the ice age. So it took a lot of time for Adam to dry. 40 years. And then Shaitan, he entered from his nose and he came out from his anus. And then he told the angels, don't worry, he is not the same as Allah, for he is hollow from inside. So Allah is not hollow. This is your prophet stories. And then they say to you, you cannot discuss how Allah is made, how Allah look like, how Allah. So Allah is not hollow. Allah have hands, Allah have five fingers, Allah have a foot, Allah descend, Allah he sit on the chair, Allah is heavy, Allah go, you know, uh, big, Allah is akbar, and then Allah cannot have a son without a girlfriend, and then they said to you, you cannot question those questions. But you, Allah he did. Simply all this drama is because they worship unknown, pagan God. They don't even know what Allah means. If you ask any Muslim what Allah means, they will say to you, uh, God. No. God in Arabic is coming from the Aramaic, Rab. Rab. And the Quran mentioned many times. We just showed you the story of Abraham. He said, when he saw the sun coming, Bazighatan, he said, Hada Rabbi, Hada Akbar. Hada Rabbi, Hada means this. Rabbi is the word Rab. Which means my you add yeah at the end that will make it your Rabb, your Lord. Hada Rabbi. So this is the word God. And the Muslim they say there is no God but Allah. So Allah is the name of the God. It's not the word mean God. They are confused about everything. They do not know what Lah mean. They do not know where it's coming from. They do not know anything about this God. Muhammad, he never even spoke to his God. He never saw his God. He never even you know, I heard one word from him. Yet we find in the Quran that Allah He spoke to Isa. Allah He spoke to uh, to to uh, to uh, uh, supposedly the father of uh, of Maryam, which is very funny. Amran, 
You know, he spoke to Zechariah, he spoke to the devil, he spoke to Adam, he spoke to Moses, he spoke to everybody. But Allah don't want to speak to the greatest between mankind. So he spoke even to the ant. Allah spoke to everybody. Allah spoke even to the bees. Allah, he inspired the bees. So Allah even spoke to the bees, but he wouldn't want to spoke to Muhammad. Why? Because Muhammad is not a bee. He's a cockroach, maybe. So now, how we can ask those questions? You cannot ask those questions. Those are disturbing. And the answer is not there. Nothing is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or similar to Allah azza wa jal. So we all know this. Let's look at the attribute of hearing. As a human being, we hear and we listen. If there are four people talking in front of me and they're speaking the same language and they're addressing me with their problems, would I be able to comprehend all of them at the same time? Definitely not. At best, I may pick a few words here or there from two of them and be able to figure out their problems. But all four? Impossible. Is Allah's hearing like us? So can someone come and ask like you, Muiz, and says, how? I'm a bit confused. When we know that there are 7 billion inhabitants of the human being, of the human Hey, Abdul. So if Allah hearing not like us, are you saying Allah hearing is better than our hearing? He can hear more, many people at the same time. But it's still he have to come down to the earth or to the heaven, to the lowest heaven to hear us. He cannot hear us above the seven heaven. And you said this hadith is authentic. So why the mighty God, he disturb himself and he have to travel far away distance just to hear us, if he can hear us from there. So either we have to accept that Allah hearing is limited, Allah reception is limited, my God, the Messiah, do not need to come every third part of the night. And what is the point of this third part of the night? Only at that time he will come down, maybe the whole day is traveling, yeah? Hmm? So, my Lord, he says, every two of you mention my name, I will be between them, which means he will be the third. He do not need to come down. He do not know the third part of the night, second part of any time. Every two of you mention my name, I will be between them. Human race on earth at the moment. And they speak in thousands of languages and dialects. So why Allah require you to pray to him in Arabic? You see, he's talking about you speak in thousands of languages, but when you pray to Allah, you have to pray in Arabic. Isn't it weird? You are an Asian person, maybe from Indonesia. You live in Saudi Arabia. How you pray to Allah in Arabic? Why a person who live in Indonesia, he have to pray to Allah in Arabic if there is a bill, seven billions and an endless number of languages? Why he cannot listen to all of them in any in their languages? The Christians, they pray to their God in any language. The Muslims, they are not allowed to pray to their God unless they are praying in Arabic because simply the Arab are enslaving you. Do your God understand languages? The obvious is not. And they speak at the same time. And Allah hears each and every one of them and records all what they say. What does this have to do even with the question? The question is how Allah they send every day. Now we are talking about hearing. Guys, the question is, how does Allah look at the title? Look at this. I mean, look at the madness of the Muhammadan. 
This is the question. Now he's talking about Allah. How he here? How does Allah descend to the lowest heaven in the third part of the night? What is the topic now? Become about how Allah have a good hearing. But if Allah have a good hearing, He will not go down anyway. Allah Azza wa Jal even knows what goes into their in their minds. Yeah, this is exactly uh, because this is why the, the Quran is messed up. Isn't it the Quran in the chapter of Al Kafirun? Allah said to Muhammad, Tell them, I will believe not in what you believe, and you will never believe in what I believe. So I will not believe in what you believe, and you will never do to believe what I believe because I will not believe and I believe. So I don't believe you, anybody believe, and you believe anybody believe. I have my religion, you have mine, you have yours. So if Allah He knew the, what is in the mind, how come all of those later they became Muslims? He just told us a thousand times, you will not believe in what I believe, and I will not believe in what I believe. And you will never believe in what I believe, and you will never believe. But you will believe in what I believe. Is that correct? Are you there? Good breath. First of all, Allah He said, you will not believe in what I believe, and Allah said the truth. But Zakir Naik, all of them they convert to Islam later. Good breath. First of all, not all of them. As an example, the neighbor of the Prophet Muhammad, he have a cat, he could convert to Islam. She, what? She, what he, have, he have a cat, she did not convert to Islam. You know? Because simply, when he died, he was eating pork. This is how you know she is not a Muslim cat. Is that the same cat that did not walk in the Quran? Or the cousin? Good breath. First of all, the cat doesn't work in the Quran because the cat they understand that the word of Allah. Yeah, Muhammad and I, I walk on the Quran. So how come the Quran? Good thing, Prince. This is why they let in the Quran that you are stupid. I mean, who can beat those people, their logic? Continue, Potato. Without them speaking it, not only that, Allah hears and knows what animals in their billions talk about. Oof, 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 oof. I mean, look at this. Allah, He know what is inside the animal's bellies. Yeah, Abdul, you take it, you take your animal to any bit, he will find out for you in five dollars. Only Allah, He knew that. How we know that Allah is not using machines to, um, by the way, is there a proof that Allah, He knew? What is the proof? In fact, Allah obviously don't know because Muhammad, He said in the hadith, what He learned from Allah, that the one who have orgasm first, the baby will look like him, boy or a girl, and same look too. <laughs> so how Allah, he knew, I mean, look, just to show you how stupid this religion is, only Allah knew what is inside the belly. But now I know without even having anything in the belly yet, because the one who have orgasm first, The boy will look like him, will be a male or female. So I am Allah now. Are you, are you, do you understand what I'm saying? Any human being, based on this, he knew what is inside the building. Because just remember, who have orgasm first? Go have sex with your wife. If you are ugly like me, don't have orgasm first. Nine months after, don't sleep with her no more. You know exactly that your wife, or as soon you you notice that she have a she have a belly coming out, so she is going in a baby. So now, okay, now you know that you have a girl. She looked like her mom, because the one who have orgasm first is the one who decide the gender of the baby and how we look like. So we do not need Allah. Same for the dog. We bring two dogs, male and female, unless you're in Thailand. And then the dog, he have the male dog have orgasm first. So now we will know that all the babies in the dog. By the way, Muhammadan, we can solve this problem. So if they have orgasm first, if the male have orgasm first. How you explain to me that the dog have like a bunch of puppies and there is many gender between them? I thought that's it. The one have orgasm first. He is in charge of the gender. I mean, don't ask Muhammad. Don't ask questions. You will get dizzy. 
This is how stupid this man is. Muhammad, he is a smart person as long as you are a donkey. If you are not, you don't see how stupid he is. You see a mule because you are a donkey. So now, until now, where is the answer? What birds, what fish, what, what fish? insects, what... This is the guy who said to us that that lizard is kind of insect. Do you remember? Hmm. Any living creature on earth is saying or doing or thinking of. Are you a bit confused? Yep. So Abdul, as long as Allah he knew what we are thinking, so he was not thinking that your Muslim will be confused, so he could not make it clearer. I mean, as long as he knew what we are thinking, as long as Allah he knew the future, brother. Don't he knew that the Muslims will be confused by what he say? Look, he knew what you're thinking. So why he did not provide the answer and why he make it confusing? So now you are telling me that your God Allah, he knew what we are thinking, and yet he insists to be stupid and confuse the Muslims? That is a smart teacher. Hey, listen, I know what you're thinking. But so can you make it more clear? Because what we're thinking is confusing. Exactly. We think, friends. First of all, Allah decided to make it confusing. What's your problem? Is yeah, that Quran or Yoka? Listen. I don't think Allah decided to make it confusing. Because I we just heard the Sheikh saying, Allah, he knew what you are thinking. Get them breath. First of all, Allah, he made you think the way you're thinking. What the heck? So Allah made me think the way I'm thinking. And now I'm thinking being confused. So Allah made me think to be confused. And that exactly because Allah is powerful. Get them breath. First of all, Allah is all knowing. And he knew that you would be confused. In fact, he made you confused because he liked to see you confused. And look at you, look at you, you're funny. You are very confused now. Yeah, dude, but they are talking about Muslims, not me. I'm a Christian prince, I'm laughing at Allah. But the one who's confused is the Muslim calling the Sheikh. Don't you notice? Christian prince, but the one respect yourself. Those are not Muslim. Those are Hindu from India. Like, what the heck? The Hindu from India, her name is Fatima? And Hassan and Hussein and Muhammad? Exactly. In fact, I know the name of that guru. What, what? You know the, you know the real name of Sadhguru? What his name? Muhammad. What? Sadhguru, first of all, he is not a Hindu. And he is under cover agent for Allah. What the heck? He is like a FBI and Allah sent him? Exactly. Listen, Zakir, I want to finish this program. Can you give me a break? Good and Prince, I can't give you any break. Abdul, don't, I mean, don't take it literally. Christian friends, I know that you are mean it pathetically. But what? I mean what? Metaphorically. Okay, metaphorically. Can you give me a break so I can finish? Christian friends, first of all, I know that you don't mean it metaphorically. A second ago, you said I mean it metaphorically. So now what do you want? Let me finish the program. Somebody take him away from here. Christian friends, Christian friends, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Christian friends. Hey, monkey. Let us listen to this donkey, and then I will come back to you. Continue. Definitely not. You said, yeah, okay, this is Allah Azza wa Jal. He, he is capable of that and more. Okay, why were you not confused? Because you acknowledged that Allah's attribute of hearing is not like ours. Likewise with knowledge. Likewise. That's it. The problem solved. The one is not confused because he acknowledged that Allah is hearing is not like us. But this is not the question. <laughs> anyway, guys, it's time to go. <laughs> I mean, this is, can you believe it? How stupid this garbage cult is? This is God. If this is God, what is stupidity? If this is God, what is madness? You are confused. The one who is not confused because he don't think about Allah hear the same we are hearing. But this is not even the question. The guy he forgot what the title of the video. And this is exactly what they teach kids in the Middle East. Ask questions about stupid things. 
Brother, yesterday I drank, I was sucking the nipples of my wife and some milk dropped in my mouth. Did she become my sister now, brother? What the heck? Have you ever heard of religion? If somebody drank the milk of a breast of somebody become her, became her son? So the guy is having sex with his wife and he suckled her nipples because he's hungry. Remember, Allah, he ordered breastfeeding for adult. And now she become his mom? In Islam, adoption is forbidden, but they adopt by the nipples. I mean, how adoption is forbidden, but the nipples can make you a baby of the mother. Either adoption is forbidden totally or it's not. So this is the religion of stupidity. If you are stupid, join it. You fit perfectly there. I want to say thank you guys for being here. I'm glad that today we have no issue with the sound. And see you again soon. Maybe I will give you a break from me tomorrow. Do you want a break or do you want to come back? Give me one if you like me to come back tomorrow. Give me one if you like me to come back tomorrow. Come on, I am an Arab. I believe in democracy. But don't give us uh, don't forget not to give us a like i mean look how many people watching and then they don't make a comment they don't uh, yeah give us a one if you like me to come back all right as long all of you want me to come back i'm not coming all right. okay 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 you know that first of all we arab we do the opposite you say yes i say no never say yes to an arab are you crazy don't you see what happened Since when we believe in democracy and voting? Cuckoo, cuckoo. You're not listening. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, I offended you, sorry. Okay, if you like me not to come tomorrow, give me one. If you like me to not, to not to come tomorrow, give me one. All right, there's many people like me not to come tomorrow. God give me one. Thank you. See? So now, see, I, I just counted the number. Allah gave me sharp eyes. And I found out that the number is saying, don't come tomorrow, which is one. And the one who is coming, come tomorrow, which is one. But I was able to read your mind because Allah told me what that one mean and what the other one mean. Even though both of them look the same, both of them are one. Remember, we believe in the oneness of Allah. So now each one of you, he gave me Allah in the chat. One, 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 one. And you see the Muslim giving you a finger. The only religion give a finger to their God is the Muhammadan. So I hope that was not a finger. Hello? So, yeah, we will give you a break maybe tomorrow. We will see. Until we see you soon again, God is good. So is Jesus. And Muhammad is nothing but a fool. Did you hear it, Abdul? Take it from me. Take care. God bless.